Hello everyone and welcome to Sun Up. I'm Lyndall Stout. Today we want to focus on some of the many benefits young people can get from working with livestock. So over the next half hour, we're bringing you our favorite stories on the subject. To begin, here's Austin Moore in Hughes County. Here on Sun Up, we have a few hard and fast rules about what stories we cover and where we take you. Number one on that list, no banquets. But today we're breaking that rule because we want to show you an exceptional livestock program here in Hughes County. And to do that, we have to go to the end of the story, a banquet. Don't worry, it's not you. This program puts our 4-H and FFA members in the feedlot business with one animal. It's the calf has to be born in Hughes County to a member of the Hughes County Cattlemen's Association. We weigh these steers in in September. They feed them for 160 days. Um, they're taken to slaughter after our county livestock show. These cattle and their keepers are evaluated on several criteria. For their gain, for their placement in the county show, for their carcass grade, and for the records they keep. They keep all of their feed records, all of their gain records, all of their treatment records, um, any medications that, that the animal was given. Had to keep track of like all the corn we put in there because we added corn into their feed. Colton McCorkle was the bell ringer last year. That is the student with the best cumulative score between the four categories. He talked to us about his experience raising and showing cattle. It's all friendly out in the barn before there, but whenever you go out and get in there and start going, it's all out war. I mean, you got kids from, they all know you and you know them, and they're all friends in the barn, but whenever you get in the show ring, it's just, it's, let's see who can win. He says the feed out program has changed the way he looks at cattle. Before this, I'd never really looked at any bulls or just looked at the pictures and saw, oh, that one looks kind of bad. And, oh, that one's pretty good. But then you start looking at all the numbers and figures and the APDs and everything. You, it starts like turning out who's the good one and who's really the bad one. All aspects of the production steer program are, is, is a it's a win-win situation for everyone involved. For the breeder, it's a very beneficial tool in that you find out what kind of cattle you've got. Leon Barrett fine-tuned his herd based on the information this program provided him. It, it's very important uh, to know what kind of cattle you've got. Uh, if, if, those, if that data comes back negative, your rate of gain is no good, your feed efficiency is no good, uh, and that old carcass grades uh, something like standard or select, it's probably time to change bulls. It could be costing you a lot of money. I guess we could gather up a few head and send them to Stillwater or the Noble Foundation and run them through a program and, and get that information and pay a lot of money to get it done. This way you're, uh, you're helping a, a kid uh, make some college funds and it provides uh, the local community, people that want some good, the best beef uh, that they can buy. You can't get this in the grocery stores. You can come up to the auction and, and, and buy half a beef or a whole beef and put it in the freezer and once you do that you'll never go back to the grocery store. That brings us to the banquet where awards are handed out. This year, Colton McCorkle won the Bell Ringer Award again. Then, after some education on how meat is graded and how it all stacks up, the auction begins. And local people like it because they have a chance to buy steel that's grown here in Hughes County and they can have it processed to their specifications. All this from a program where youth learn a business. Businesses learn more about the product they're selling and consumers learn just how good beef can be. Everyone is learning. The cattle producers that produce the calf are learning. The students that feed the calf are learning. Everybody's learning. It is a fantastic program. From Hughes County, I'm Austin Moore. When it comes to livestock shows, most of us naturally think about the time spent in the ring. But a lot of teamwork goes into getting an animal ready to show. Dave Deacon takes us to a contest directed at those skills. When a heifer or steer makes its way into the show ring, there's been a small army of people working hours to make it the best bovine in the barn. But what if you and only two other people had just 30 minutes to make your heifer show ready? Could you do it? It's down there is where it'll be. Riley, Brock, are you put them in the box? and Blake are up to the task. And we're just going to 
sh show them what to do and how you do it, and they're going to judge us on how well she looks when she's done and how our teamwork works. See, they had to qualify back home in Rogers County to make it to the Oklahoma Youth Expo State Cattle Fitting Contest. We've always kind of worked together because we're from the same county and we just help each other out. With generator roaring, the heifer in place, a quick check of their equipment, the team from Rogers County gets some last minute instructions. Good luck, have Thanks. fun. Thanks. One, two, three, two. Then the words that this team's been waiting to hear. Now their planning becomes action. Crowds gather to watch as they almost transform into a NASCAR pit crew for this heifer. They blow the hair, brush it with a special cordless drill, then... We have tail adhesive, which is like glue, and that helps get the hair stand up. And then we've got combs, which helps us go up with the <laughs> hair. And while they're combing the hair out, they had their first of three judges make his rounds. Riley, Blake, and Brock are so focused that it really didn't bother. Quality of the kids. Uh, the, the experience that they've had from being able to go to a lot of different events through the year really shines and it, may, it would make the state of Oklahoma proud anywhere you would go because these kids are as good as there is in America. They're just a true talented group that's a joy to work with. The Rogers County crew are finishing up combing the hair out and moving on to the trimming. They got to move efficiently because 30 minutes really isn't a lot of time when you have 30 square feet of heifer to groom. Although everyone may have different ideas, the team eventually comes together in the end. We clipped her, we fit her legs, and we pretty much got her ready for a show. One minute, one minute. The heifer is nearly show ready. Now it's Riley's turn to get ready for the ring. And with some last minute instructions. When they call time, stop. Brock and Blake tidy their work area up. Stop it, power down. Now it's up to the judges. So Riley, how do you think you guys did? I think she looks really good, but then you got to remember there's a bunch of other ones that are out there that are look good. I mean, it kind of comes down to how she looks and then also how your team worked together as a team. And I personally think our team worked pretty good. So you guys worked as a team. Um, everybody participated equally. I mean. Yeah, hopefully we will come back this evening. And we'll go and we'll break her down and take everything out of her, wash her, and then blow her completely dry. And then we will, yeah, hopefully, if we make it, we'll come back. Livestock competitions don't necessarily need to end with high school. Sunup intern Mindy Andrus showcases a group of students taking their experience with them to college. Bringing home this bronze bull from Louisville is not an easy task. Livestock judging has been part of Oklahoma State's heritage for nearly a century. Intercollegiate livestock judging contests have been held since about 1900. Oklahoma State University began to field competitive intercollegiate teams in the 1920s. Since we won our first national championship in livestock judging in the 20s, OSU students have actually won more national championships in judging than any other university. OSU has attracted hundreds of students over the years, all hoping to leave their mark in history. Senior Clay Zwilling joined the team in 2011. Uh, when we look back on this experience, we're going to realize we put so much hard work, effort, and dedication into uniting as a team to reach this common goal. And I think that winning that contest has been an extremely humbling experience, but it's especially neat to be here at OSU. Coming home with the Bronze Bowl from Louisville is something we're always going to remember as a team, and we really left our mark in history here at OSU. Members gain valuable experience and learn life lessons. Jamie Bloomberg came from a junior college in Illinois to join this respected team. Judging has been one of the most beneficial things that I've ever done. The skills that you learn are absolutely priceless. You learn how to travel with people and you learn how to plan weeks in advance for these trips that you go on. You learn how to make decisions and then turn around and defend yourself with those decisions that you've made. So the skill sets that you learn are absolutely invaluable and, and very important. Although beneficial, Judging demands time and dedication. The team's schedule has two 90-day periods. Uh, within those two 90-day windows, it's extremely busy. 20-some hours a week in judging. You practice pretty much um, every night. Four to five days a week. You know, anywhere from two to three hours per set. Monday and Wednesday afternoons. 
through the week and then all the way through the weekend. We're preparing for the National Western in Denver. American Classic Contest in Wichita. With the National Barrow Show. Or the Dixie National. Kansas State Fair. Compete at the Tulsa State Fair. San Antonio Stock Show. The National Barrow Show in Austin, Minnesota. The American Royal, which is the contest that leads up to Louisville, which is the National Championship Contest that all senior colleges try to aspire to win. Winning is the team's goal but what they learn about themselves and others mean much more. Everybody wants to compete, you enjoy livestock, and we all enjoy the day that we come out on top in a competition. But there's a lot of things that impact the 60 to 80 years of a student's life following college that you get from this experience that probably long term are a lot more important than where you finished or where your team finished on a given day. Higher quality, longer, and balance may be used in reasons, but they also can be used to describe the life of a livestock judge. For SUNUP, I am Mindy Andrews. For h and FFA members that uh, like to show livestock should keep a few basic common sense biosecurity rules in mind as they take the livestock to the exhibitions, the county fairs, the state fairs that they like to show. Before they go to the fair, I think it's very important that they make sure that the livestock, especially breeding heifer projects, have been vaccinated properly. Visit with your veterinarian and make sure that they have the proper immunizations before they ever go to the show. The things that I'd talk to my veterinarian about would be such things as IBR and BVD. Those are respiratory diseases that can be spread rather easily in an environment such as a livestock show. Then when we get to the show, there's some common sense things that I think you really need to consider. First of all, use your own feed troughs and watering pails. Don't exchange those with other exhibitors. Even though that might seem like the neighborly thing to do, it's really not a smart idea from the health of your livestock and others. Also, consider bringing some kind of a plywood panel, some way of separating the uh, very front of the stalls where, where your cattle are being tied so that they don't have nose-to-nose -nose contact with strange cattle across the fence from them. Then when you take their, your livestock back home, I would really suggest that you keep them isolated for three weeks at least before you turn them out with the other calves or the other cattle in your folks' cow herd. This is a good time that if they happen to have come in contact with some disease, we should be able to identify it and get it treated before it spread to the rest of our livestock operation. When we're taking care of those that we've just brought home from a exhibition, as you're doing your chores, I would take care of the other calves first and then feed these that you just brought home from a, a show last so that if there's a possibility that they have some kind of a disease, you won't be spreading that to the, the calves that you already have at home. Just a few common sense things that I think can really help us to make sure that we don't bring a particular disease organism back to our home place after we've taken our, our projects to the shows and fairs this year. Hey, we look forward to visiting with you again next week on SUNUP's Cow-Calf Corner. Competitive livestock shows are a great way for young people to develop important life skills. But for some, those shows can take on an even deeper meaning, as you'll see in these stories. You ready, Don? Yep. All right, here we go. It is a big day for Donald Kraft and perhaps in some ways, the future of agricultural straight. education. As he steps into the show ring with his pig, yeah, the stands are filled to capacity with supporters Everyone's rooting for him and his fellow classmates at Noble High School. This way, this way. The event is called the Special Olympics Unified Livestock Show, better known as Souls. Donald is a relative newcomer to showing livestock. Noble FFA Chapter President Forrest Key is more experienced. I know, let's turn them around and drive them straight towards the judge. Let's give them a front view. In eighth grade, I started by showing these sheep. And after that, I wanted to move on to the pigs. So this year's my first year to show pigs. That's why these two have paired up. 
So have other FFA members and special needs students. Turn that high school. He likes Ford Shop, including the co-announcer reading his script written in Braille. It gives them a chance to have kids who probably most likely would never get the chance to actually do it, get that opportunity. The annual event first got its start here in 2009. At the time when we did this, no other um, program that we knew of in the United States was doing anything like this. Now word is spreading. Chapters in other communities are interested. Even the FFA National Circuit is taking notice. We were selected as one of 10 finalists for the Models of Innovation uh, area uh, at Nationals and uh, we got to send two students to compete in a room and they got to go over three activities that we did and this was one of the activities that we presented and uh, the kids worked really really hard on, on their presentation and when it was all done and the smoke cleared we, we got to be national champions so we were really excited about that. I work for the county extension office and so I'm, I'm familiar with all the school systems but I have children that go to school uh, in Lexington, just south of here, and I'm and I'm thinking as I'm watching this, this would be such a great idea, you know, for for each local group to do it, or on a county level to to have an opportunity like this, an opportunity to shine while learning how to handle and care for animals. Uh, first of all, they'll you know they get used to the sheep and the pigs, and then we'll wash them, and then blow dry the sheep, and clip the hogs, and then we'll oil down the hogs with a, a non illegal oil. And then we take them and show them. Say, here, little pig, come this way, this way, little pig, uh -huh. and walk them around in a little bit. At the same time, FFA members are gaining valuable life experience. A lot of kids, um, you know, in the show circuit uh, are extremely competitive, and if they don't win the class or win the show, uh, they get upset and they're very frustrated because they don't get to do that. We've taken all that away and we've made it to where it's about the kids. It's awesome to be able to take out a kid that never gets to be around any type of livestock or have anything to do with the agriculture industry. And so now we get to take these kids and put them in a show ring with livestock animals and they get their blue ribbon. In addition to his ribbon, Donald's proud to take home an FFA t-shirt. We are hotter than a smoking gun. So you like these pigs? Yeah. They're pretty cool. It was wonderful to watch the interaction between the, the, all the kids. Um, really seemed to be interested in the animals, but interested in helping one another and have a good experience in the show ring and you know learn about the animal. And it was just really, really fun to watch. We've kind of gone back to the roots of what what uh, agricultural education is all about, and it's about the kids. It's also about going above and beyond. We like to give back to our community and to our school for all of the support that they give us by taking these kids and letting them show. And giving everyone here a glimpse at the future of agricultural education. Just as the first line of the official FFA creed says, with a faith born not of words, but of deeds. Have you ever taken the time to really listen to the sounds of a junior livestock show? Can you really describe the shapes of each animal and what they feel like? This young man can, because to Gunner, those are the things that matter the most. Gunner was born 13 weeks premature, and um, he developed a condition called retinopathy of prematurity as a result, which left him being blind. Today he's 11, and he is just a wonderful person. Um, he's changed my life in so many ways. Is this the arena? Like I where we so, ride horses? And so one evening as we were walking, I, I just kind of mentioned, you know, it would be kind of neat if Gunner had a lamb. And Tony said, I can help him with that. He wanted a lamb. So uh, we found him a lamb, got it donated for him. He's got uh, long tags on his ear. Mm -hmm. And then. I'm leading him with a rope. I walk with him and Keep your arm back. he's really nice. What's that noise? It's a uh, forklift. There's the car. Hey Gunner, how are you? Good. You ready to show your lamb? Yeah. Dakara Graham takes time out of her busy college life to help Gunner and his uncle Todd learn the basics of showing a sheep. We've had him for probably two, three months. Uh, this is our first year doing this. And it's a learning experience for me, but 
but uh, right, I think we're doing all right. Uh, champion and reserve up and clean because we are going to have the champion drive a little bit later. Right, While everyone is watching the cattle show, there are three people on their way back to the pens. He's been looking forward to it. I think he has less apprehension than, than most. He's, he's not afraid. He's not nervous. He's, he's ready to go show. Good luck, Gunner. This All is right. Mary Lynn from the riding. We're going to watch you, OK? OK. You're going to do good. This is the first show for two of them. But DeCara knows that Gunner and his uncle Todd will do just fine. OK, let's go. Don't go real slow, OK? Go this way. Turn left. You're doing good. It's like his mother was telling me, you know, his brothers and sisters get to play ball and get to do other things, and, and it's, it's harder for him. Okay. Now we're going to take another left, okay? Something different than his other, other siblings have is, is good for him, I think, for his, his development. You know what? What? Man, I've got more admiration for you than anybody I've ever met. I'm going to shake your hand, okay? Okay. Good job. I mean, it's hard to explain. I mean, I wouldn't give it up for nothing. It's just I really think amazing. You like my opinion, probably gonna He's talking about your land. Wow. Like the young yeah. man here in the center, uh, he'll be driving the class winner. That's the one behind class. you. It makes me want to cry. Um, I'm proud of Gunner. I'm very proud of him. You get a ribbon now. Nice to see you. Yeah. Yay. He's, right, he's quite a young man. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you very much. Yeah. It was good. I got a ribbon. Third place. Yeah. He's wanting a pig next year, and which uh, we're we're going to try to talk him into stay with maybe a lamb till we can kind of get a little experience, but we'll see. There you go. Good. Good balance, excellent. Stacy Brooks right. is in Stacey, her element. Can you go backwards? Can you go backwards? Her weekly riding lesson at Bit by Bit. There you go, very nice. A therapeutic horseback riding center just outside of Claremore, Oklahoma. Amanda Brooks says her big sister loves it here. I love seeing the smile on her face. I love seeing that she's happy. Each riding lesson is tailored to fit that specific rider's needs. Trista here, Milliman left, is the lead instructor. All the activities we do, um, we incorporate into the riding skills so that they're riding the horse, but they're working on the things they need to work on, like Stacy with her balance and her hand-eye coordination. Stacy is one of more than 1,000 riders who've it's taken wow. lessons here right. since it all began 17 years ago. We started with one horse and four kids and myself. And it grew from there. Founder and director Linda Barron says therapy horses need a certain personality. We take our horses on a 45-day trial basis because not every horse can do this. And we put them in different situations, situations that will be similar to those in class. And then we, we talk and decide how they have done. Um, it's, it's a very confining role for a horse in that them being a flight animal to have a person in front, two people on the side, and then perhaps a rider that is not in the position that they're accustomed to on a regular ride, it takes a very calm and gentle horse. It also takes committed volunteers who get training and certification to be able to work with horses and those with special needs. But it also allows our individuals within the community to support a program and to come together to benefit others. Um, you know, we always talk about the, um, the gratitude that you get when you're able to volunteer, and this is just one option that those that may have a equine background to feel like that they can be part of a really meaningful organization. But each day at Bit by Bit Good brings job. new challenges. Some days you have a really hard lesson. It, it doesn't always work out the way you want it to, and then you see someone like that just have an outstanding day, an outstanding ride, and you see other confidence, and it's just, it makes it all worth it. It's, it's, a, it's the type of job that it doesn't feel like a job because you're playing around with horses and, and these kids all day. Sometimes it's almost magical what happens in this arena. We have families that say, you know, my child never used his right hand because he was tactically defensive until he held the reins. Those are the things that we're trying to do. We're trying to take the skills that we build with the horse and our staff and volunteer 
and make their lives better, their everyday lives better. And in this season of giving, that may just be the best gift of all. She's not scared to take on things now, now that she's been around horses more, riding them more and stuff, and getting to do the activities that they get to do here. She definitely has opened up more, and her self-esteem is very much boosted. Good job. Good for you. Hi, welcome to Shop Stop. Today we want to talk about cutting poly rope. Yeah, the main thing you want to do when you're talking about cutting poly rope is it, whenever you cut it, you always get a frayed end. So how do you alleviate that frayed end? Well, a lot of times we'll sit there with a big lighter and heat the end of it up and then play with it and try to get a, a nice form on it. And, and hopefully we don't get any of the poly stuck to our thumb or our fingers and burn a hole in our hand. The other way to do it is you could just take a uh, a uh, piece of sheet metal. It doesn't have to be sharp. Just take the, the sheet metal, heat it up enough, and, uh, and basically just melt right through the rope, and it seals it at the same time that you cut through it. So there you go. You can cut it and seal it all in, in one with one device. The point is, is the heat does the cutting for you, not the sharp edge. That's how to cut rope and uh, keep it from getting frayed. We'll see you next time on Shop Stop. If you're interested in youth livestock programs, be sure to contact your local county extension office. And that does it for us this week. Remember, you can find us anytime at sunup.okstate.edu. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Lyndall Stout. We'll see you next time at Sunup.